what we do here is go back, back, back. You know, How old were you when you did my side? Four. Four? four. four. Yeah, I was thinking four. Was four? Wait, four or five? There were four. Four. Yeah, four. So he was younger than you when, when we were doing Filming. movie, movies together. Well. <laughs> Holy cow. He was like four years old. That's a, no pressure. Do you remember, <laughs> no do you remember the scene where, where uh, Quinn, uh, Johnny, scared you? Yes. <laughs> yes. That was I remember brutal. That. But he was like all, he got all his, and then he's like, you remember that scene? And I'm like, can scared. we just give him a minute because I think he's actually upset. Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was standing up against the demon. <coughs> Got really into the role. Right. Yeah. Four. All in his face. At four? I wouldn't be doing anything with demons. <laughs> I stood up. I, 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 I would it. understand. I would have read the script the night before and be like, oh, there's a demon? I'm out. No, he, he <laughs> loves it. He stood up against this just because Johnny got the, the, the main he reason. He started though, sniffing him. Yeah, that's what it was. That was a little weird. That I <laughs> ended up, though, like, not freaked out by him was because I realized he looks like Darth Maul. He does look like Because he did. Yeah. It kind of looked like Darth Maul with the, the red and the black uh, tattoos all over him. Stuff like it was just he got real close in yeah. my life. So he just finished season yeah, three of really PJ Masks. Right. So. so I guess we can start now. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty yeah. full room, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, it's, I might have to yell. Can everybody in the back hear me? You do panels the way I did them when they're small. I'm like, I'm like, everybody get up front here. It makes me feel better about myself. Well, I, was, I, was, I was telling them before anyone was in here, um, as opposed to now. Uh, we were we were we were doing a panel here last year, and there was more. There's four people in the crowd, and there's Ian and I doing the panel, and we're like, you know why? You guys sit up here, and oh. so we brought them onto the stage, and we did the panel from the crowd, and then as time went on, more people joined in. <laughs> it was That's it cool. was it was just it was an easier way of doing it. Alrighty. So I think you guys are all know who you're here to see. Uh, yeah. Hi, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just sit here. It's too bad you couldn't find a babysitter. Uh, uh, bring <laughs> but no, so uh, you've been in the industry now for how long? Um, since four. Yeah, since there's four. <laughs> and I'm 13 now, so nine years. That's crazy. Yeah. What was your first official acting credit? Um, Student film. Does that even count though? Yeah, it yeah. was. Uh, there was a student film in Toronto right when I started basically. Now and then. Yeah, that. Now and then. What was that about? I don't even remember. Uh, it was basically. Honest. I do, because yeah. I'm old. Um, <laughs> so basically, it was a show with um, two kids playing. There was Kyle and an African American girl. And just showing the dynamics between them with actual toys and then flashing forward to the t time of cell phones and DS's and showing the kids in the same situations just the disconnect that occurs um, because of technology yeah so that was basically the, the gist of it was you know he basically didn't notice the friend was even there anymore and was more frustrated with the fact that his battery was dying on his games where when you go back to the past, they were you know making stuff, building blocks, okay. doing all those. Oh, so you played both like both the so, yeah. now and the then. So it was now. Oh, oh that's really. So cool. it showed both. So it, it was a it, it was a good film. That was the first opportunity that it was offered. I got to play DS the whole time. That's a pretty sweet role. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty sweet role. Um, as opposed to like like in 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 like doing film and television, an eating scene is miserable because you're just. Oh my. Okay, actually. Here we go. Hold on. I've got a couple interesting eating scenes. If you've got stories. some pie, lock it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in parental guidance, when I was six, uh, there was a cake eating scene, and I love cake. I mean, what what six year old doesn't love cake? Um, but <laughs> she doesn't like cake. Um, but I had to eat cake for two days straight to get the scene done. And by the end of it, I was actually barfing the cake back up at the end of the scene because I couldn't take it anymore. And then again recently, I had an eating scene um, and I decided to eat pastries for it because it was uh, like grapes and stuff or a single pastry. But my character hadn't eaten in a few days, so I had to like devour the whole thing. Yeah. So every take, I had to just devour this Danish over and over again. and. 
uh, I'm never eating another Danish again, ever. I, my dad actually offered me one a couple weeks ago, and I was like, nope, that happened. See, yeah, it, how do you devour grapes? Oh. Slowly. Very Easy. slowly. Easy. Yeah, the pastry seems like an obvious choice. Um, what's been your favorite project so far? Dang, that is a hard question. I actually don't know the answer to that because they've all had their different, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Pros and cons. Like yes. They each have yes. their benefits and they yes. each have their, their negative aspects. Yes. So, all right, so let's go broader. Do you prefer doing on-screen acting or the voice acting stuff that you've done? Then again, they both have their benefits. I yeah. mean, um, for voice, for instance, I can show up in my pajamas and... Which he doesn't mean, do. No, I'm not that I do that, but I could. <laughs> but to have that opportunity... If I really wanted to, I could. It's like not him. Yeah. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could. Um, but, and uh, when I do a voice, like if somebody has seen the show, and they hear me or see me in public, they won't necessarily immediately know it's me. So I have that kind of general freedom yeah. of being able to go places without anybody noticing me as easily. So it stays anonymous. And um, then on screen, I get to go places more often because, I mean, uh, for voice, it's a studio, and I go to the same studio pretty much every time. But yeah. then on camera, you're traveling to you know Vancouver, LA, all over the place. Yeah. And then you get to develop stronger relationships with the people you're working with because with voice, some, I mean, usually in my experience, it's each character goes in and does their part individually right. rather than when you're on screen, it's a scene and you need everybody there. So you definitely build stronger relationships that way. But then again, you know, I'm noticed more easily when I go places. So yeah, there's, there's two differences. Uh, you, have, you, have you met the kids that played Catboy? And yes, Mike? I have. Actually, the first, I think, four episodes of the first season, we actually did uh, as a collaboration, like with everybody in the in the booth, an ensemble. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, and just the reason that they switched, I think, is probably because it's it takes longer. Yeah. Because if one person messes up, then everybody else in the room is still waiting while they retake the line. Yeah. But then if you do it on your own, you mess up the line, you just go back immediately and you don't have to wait for everybody else to finish. So uh, it's definitely easier on your own. And I can imagine with, with a kid's show having all the kids in the same audience yeah. is also strategically challenging. Yeah, you guys must yeah. have been acting up and having fun. <laughs> Who's your, who's your, who's your, do you have any friends from the show? Uh, I don't talk to a lot of them. Like, yeah, well, like any, any movie, yeah, really. well, sometimes, yes, when I'm on camera, I will definitely talk to people afterwards, I'll say get their social media or their phone number or something so that I can talk to them afterwards, but with voice, you see the people more often because usually it's one day everybody comes in, but they still do it separately, so you'll see somebody as they leave and then the next person as you leave, so you get to uh, like talk to and see at least two people almost every time. So, yeah. Very cool. How do you memorize your lines when you're doing a movie? Like, <laughs> um, what's your strategy to memorize like what you're gonna Honestly, be doing? I don't know. Um, I do, like, don't, I have a photographic memory or something, so that helps. A lot. A lot, <laughs> a lot. Um, I'll be doing lines and I'll have the sheet in front of me and I'll be okay, let's run these, you know, you're gonna shoot in an hour. And he will do his lines, I do my lines, he goes, Mom, stop. That's not the line. <laughs> and I look at the paper and I'm like, okay, so not only does he know his lines, he knows my lines too. And I've messed up and he's pointed it out. And I feel like I can't even read them and he's already got them in his brain. It's weird. It, it's, it's, it's gotta stem from the fact that you've been doing it since you were that's right. that's it's, also it's true. a huge benefit to have yeah because by that. now I'm yeah it's just it becomes almost like not repetitive but it almost becomes like muscle memory yeah second, kind of. second nature kind yes of, yeah. yeah second nature um so I mean just it comes easily I, I I know that I have to memorize something and my brain just goes okay I'm gonna memorize this because it knows it has to um, how many cons have you been to 
Just this one. Just this one. Well, like I've been on my, on my own time. I've gone to uh, Fan Expo in Toronto, I think twice. Slightly. Um, but that was just to go to yeah, just see to stuff and uh, Sam Whitmer, who was on Human Being with being, be, being human, not human being. Um, uh, they had a panel, so I went to see him. But uh, this is the first one I've actually had a panel at. Yeah. So, uh, so when you Polaris, he sat up with you guys at the Polaris. Polaris. Yeah. Yes. Polaris, he right. Sat up with us on stage. He right. Stole the show. Yeah, that was so cute. I don't. Do you still have the footage on that one? I do. Yeah, because he goes. I just want to say I want to thank Thomas for bringing me in here because it's fun. Those are early days. My gosh. Yeah, that's so cute. I probably actually sounded like that too. Yeah, that's that was my impression. <laughs> what, what do you? Those are the blended voice back then. The blended voice. Yeah. The blended voice. <laughs> yeah. What do you what do you look for when you go to the cons? Like what gets you what's your, what's your like nerdy mm -hmm. Any Star Wars. Star, Star Wars. Wars is my thing. I Star Wars trivia I always nail. I love I've watched every movie at least twice. The Last Jedi I've not watched as many times. I know that Revenge of the Sith was my favorite for the longest time, so I've watched that one I don't even know how many times. But uh, Star Wars is definitely my thing, and it always has been, probably always will be. So if I was to ask what your dream project would be? Star Wars. Yeah, All the way. At your the universe way. somehow? I mean, even if, even if I could just like be in the background of a Star Wars movie, I'd be like, I was in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yes. fair enough. Um, is there any character that you'd really like to play? Like any anyone on the radar that you'd... Uh, like specifically Star Wars, or just or just just in general, any 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 project, any specific character where you're like, I would love to play that character. The coolest character I could probably ever play was it would be Spider-Man. That would be the the coolest thing. Just just because he's got an amazing sense of humor and he's like still got like the action and whatnot that all other superheroes have, but it just it has that uh, almost youthful <laughs> humor to it, which is so awesome. Yeah. Um. Does anyone have any other questions? Yeah. So, I've done a few very small scale, like, theatery kind of stuff. But if I were to want to, say, ever get into any form of acting or voice acting, how would I go about doing so? That would be more a question for my mom, because I have no idea how I really got here <laughs> at all. That's, that's all on, on her. Theater is a great start, especially even school plays, anything like that. Um, then what I recommend is, if you've done a few, put them on a resume, like you would for anything else. Um, then you're going to look for agents in Toronto that represent, usually you've got to start at a lower tier, like a modeling style agency. Um, there's, a, there's a few good ones around. Uh, they're going to want you to get headshots and all that stuff, and then they'll, they'll submit you. So how it kind of works is, the lower tiers are going to get you, you know, some maybe background stuff, uh, they're going to look for commercials, they're going to look for that sort of thing, um, maybe some actor roles with a couple of lines. And as you start getting more of those, as much as you may love your agent, you move up a tier with the agencies. And what you want to do is you want to just keep moving up until you end up with the top ones. Um, we kind of skipped some of the middle yeah. by <laughs> quite a bit of his actually. first year with uh, an agent, he booked commercial six short films and a web series. So what happened there was it was like, okay, we're doing all these things, everything he's going out for, he's booking. Let's see what some of the top agents think. He was small, he had big curly hair, he had a very unique look, which was a nice advantage. And I sent him out to all the top agents and they all came back saying yes, they wanted to see him. So we went to three or four, and then when we knew the top guy, we left him for last, and he was like, I love him. So we signed him, we've been with him ever since. So a lot of people will do a lot of agent jumping, but it depends on how successful you are booking other projects as to how quick they're gonna look at you know, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. There's another great resource, and people always overlook it. Um, Mandy.com is a website. All the student films, all the university programs, college programs that have to put out a student film at the end of the year, they need actors. Okay, they're not going to agencies for those actors, so you submit yourself. And that's how he did 
right. probably six right. of them. Right. 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 And it was just enough experience and to get that look on camera and that little bit in order to have a reel to send. So they don't pay you, but you learn a lot. And uh, that would be a definite recommendation. You don't get paid yeah, for very long try it. Yeah, you, it, it costs you money. Like, very few people, you know, well, I'm, not everyone's Lady Gaga. Hey, I'm gonna try a movie. Oh, I'm nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, that doesn't happen yeah. very yeah. often. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of kind of want to go with that. You just want to move up, move up, move up. I mean, especially for me, it's less of a money thing. It's more of a wanting to be like, hey, I was in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or a, um, or like a. Uh, Hey, I feel like I've accomplished something. Like, yeah, I was in this movie or this TV show or yeah. this commercial or whatever. That's one of my favorite things about this industry is just the fact that I can go to my friends and they'll be like, "Oh, I went to this movie on the weekend," and I can be like, "Yeah, I was in that." And it just it kind of it. It's almost like it. It's confidence. Boost. Yeah, it it is. It is. It's a big confidence boost. It sparks because, conversation too, yeah. and also lets other kids know that hey, he's just like me. I could do that too. Yeah. If I really wanted to, right? It just brings it down to a, a more natural. Like it, they're actors, they're kids. They're not freaks of nature. They're not. How do you handle rejection? Do you get any of that? Lots. Yeah. You just want to go get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, and now it's come to a point where when people say no, like to a project or even anywhere, really. It's not a big deal because I'm so used to it. Because I mean, in the beginning, I mean, we went out for what, like 400 or something auditions for commercials and all kinds of other stuff. And I mean, at least three quarters of them said no. So I mean, you I just have to learn to deal with it. It's not, and it's not anything reflecting on you. It's just sometimes they just decide yeah. the right look. The right yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the worst thing that you can do is take it personal. Exactly. Yeah, it's really got nothing to do with the actor. Um, sometimes it's the look. Sometimes we did have a, a film where when they did the screen test, um, because of his look, appearance, whatnot, it actually took away from the lead actor. So they were like, we can't have him in the foreground because now they're watching him instead of this person. So we need to switch those roles. Um, so we've had that happen. But I mean, there's a lot of times, oh my gosh, we love him. Oh my gosh, we love him. We love him, we love him. Can you read again? Can you read again? Can you read again? Oh, he's on hold. Uh, yeah, we went with someone else. He's all on the play Elliot now. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he, he just goes huh. because we've heard it so many times. I want to ask, how's Julia Roberts as a person? I I didn't get to talk to her a lot, but the little bit that I did, she's just she's a super nice person, like crazy nice, and she's got an amazing sense of humor. Uh, the one scene in Wonder, the graduation scene, when both her and Owen Wilson were there and there were a whole bunch of people, they were just, it, 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 loosened, it loosened everything up because everyone was like, oh my gosh, they're in the room, we gotta, we gotta make sure everything's cool. But when they started joking around, everything just kind of loosened up and you could tell. It, they're just, the two of them together are so funny and individually they're just amazing people. I feel like Crystal must have been a blast. Oh, he was... He was, he was hilarious, too. Every time Billy was behind me and would talk, I would expect to turn around and see a little green monster. Because the monster's Because <laughs> it's the same voice. Like, that's just how he sounds. Yeah. Right? I would have so. mentioned Princess Bride. Oh, uh, yeah. So you have something in common. You're both green. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. There you go. What was your experience like working on Wonder? Um, it was different. It was definitely different. It was the first uh, show that I had done that was a whole big group of kids. Cause most of the other stuff that I had done, it was uh, like adults and maybe a few kids. But this was the first one where the cast was almost entirely kids. So it was definitely crazier than most of the other stuff. Cause I mean, it was uh, just harder to control all eight of us. Cause I mean, in most scenes there were eight kids. Um, but it was, it was just a blast. But Steven Chabosky, the director, is the ninth kid. Yeah, he so is. So he, he is. was he having really fun is. with them all the time, and he, he was able to wrangle them, get them to do like anything. He was he was just he fantastic. Was but uh, and yeah, Julia, you know how you see her in front of a magazine? I swear to God, she rolls out of bed looking like that. 
she just, she's super tall, she's amazingly beautiful, and she hadn't even been through hair makeup yet. Yeah, and her, like, you know, like, and oh, her smile is actually as huge as it looks on camera. Yeah, she's just, she's so, like, <laughs> she's just a wonderful person, she really is. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, so Owen Wilson, Billy Crystal, uh, Marissa Tomei, like, you, you've, you've worked with some of the titans. Is there anyone else you really want to work with? Dwayne Johnson, for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Him, like Kevin Hart, uh, all those people. Um, uh, what's another example of somebody that I would want to work with? Like you could be in the new uh, Fast and Furious yeah. movie. You could do that. That, that would be fun. Just the young Brian O'Connor, yeah. yeah we'll you could right. pull that off. Yeah. Um, also, we keep getting Evan Peters. Um, Comparisons. People that would be saying, interesting. You know, he looks like Evan Peters. Looks like Evan Peters. So I don't know if we'll see him in the future. In the future, playing some. Yeah, some stuff coming up, right? It'd be yeah, interesting. Yeah. Playing uh, like a flashback or even like his kid or something. Yeah. As 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 a child actor, do you look for those moments to to kind of like, well, that guy's that guy's getting big. I could I could play him at twelve. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually don't look like that, but what happens is the internet tells me. Yeah, yeah that happens a all the lot. time. Is he related to this person? Is he related? He could totally play a young person. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking, I don't even know who these people are, but then I go on IMDb and I'm like, wow, they do look alike. I, I think yeah. it's one of the things that we take for granted as as the general public is, is we do those like celebrity look-alike things, we get a genuine match. Mm -hmm. um, you just get yourself. Right. <laughs> 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 Actually, when he did that, uh, the, you know, that you could twin yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He got Evan Peters. Which you're oh, so, really? yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. And himself. Right. Yeah. So that's what happened there. So he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, he's been keeping busy. Um, we had a year that was crazy that we were only home for two months out of the entire yeah, year. Yeah, I remember that. So we went from Los Angeles to Vancouver to shoot a feature, from Vancouver to Argentina to shoot a feature, home for Christmas, that was one month, and then left again back to Los Angeles to shoot a series. Yeah. It just, it was, it was like that for one year. Yes. This year, on the road kind of thing. yeah, this year, oh, and then, then he did the silence on top of that when we got back. So yeah. Um, this year it was like, oh, he's got V-Wars, he's got Rusty and PJ, let's leave it at that. Yeah. Let's let him have a little more time, kind of do his own thing, and uh, kind of worked out well. So do you homeschool, Kyle? Like, how, how do you deal with school and stuff? Actually, okay, so up until grade six, I went to school, but then grade six and seven, I, I was homeschooled. Half of grade seven, I was homeschooled because that no. year, I was just so, like, I was so busy that there wasn't really time for me to get school and online or school and tutoring on set and whatnot to all match up so that I would actually be at the same spot. So we just went with homeschooling so that, I mean, it would always be there. Um, but then we moved recently and I went back to school and uh, this year I've been in school. And next year, we're probably going to try to get some online schooling, just for just in case, right? And I mean, it's high school, and high school can be scary, so don't desperately want to go and do that. But uh, usually, it's not as hard as it would seem. Uh, juggling like school and on-set school depends on really your teachers and your principals and stuff, and how cooperative they are. And your tutor. And, yeah, and the tutor, for sure, for sure. Having the memory recall would really help with that. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, <laughs> just the crossover of your teacher and the uh, on-set teacher, just if they teach the same way, then... You're good. You're good, but I mean, if one wants to teach you something one way and the other is teaching another way, it's just, it can, can get confusing. But, I mean, if you really power, for, power through, then you got two in. No, no, so. I just find it hard like for me I wouldn't be able to handle it because you know he's sitting there he's acting he's you know maybe uh, somebody's just died and he's like ah and then they're like and cut okay Kyle you need to go to math and I'm like your brain has just 
did that, and now you got to switch it back. You got to sit there and work on your whatever, write an essay about flowers, <laughs> and then come back, and it's a continuation of a super intense. Scene. Oh, it'd be easy to cry if you have to write an essay about flowers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be crying too especially, while I'm the flowers. Especially if I'm allergic to them. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's just that sometimes that shift. I'm like, it, it is. You know, it can it be kind of happen. crazy, but sometimes what they'll do is if it's a super intense scene they'll just not send me to school and then catch up on it later so that my brain is still in the same place. But uh, sometimes they do say, you know, go to school after a super intense scene and I'm like, wait, what? Okay. It's just confusing because then, I mean, you kind of forget what you're doing at school and then you forget what was going on on set and it's just going to be hard to know. Do you, do you prefer having like a, a very like a shorter time period with one character or like being able to spend a lot of time with a character over a longer period of time. Like multi-season voice acting, you know, and you're acting in multiple seasons, that 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 offers a different challenge than it depends on feature. depends on the character, to be yeah. honest. If it's a super in-depth character that is nothing like myself, then I do prefer to have a longer period of time to get that character to work right and for it to be like, I mean, obviously nothing's perfect, but as perfect as it can be. Yeah. But if it's a character that is extremely similar to my personality, yeah. then it, like, I don't necessarily need as long to get into character. Yeah. So if it's a shorter shoot, then it's not a huge problem because it's not like I'm developing a new character because it's just me. Yeah. But uh, definitely for voice, it did take a while, especially because when I started, was a couple years before my voice started to change. Yeah. So having to keep my voice up to keep the character was, it definitely took quite a while. But I mean, after a couple seasons of my voice changing, I was like, okay, this is the pitch that I need my voice to be at. That's how I'm gonna do it every time I go through. Yeah, because that's gotta be an added, added stress on top of, on top of getting, when it, when it is relying on your voice, the being the age that you are, the changing of the voice changes a whole lot. Yeah. Well, he's been five years on PJ Masks, which is probably an extremely long run for yeah. a kid in that age group to be yeah. able to hold on to something that long. Um, so they just finished season three, and they are working on season three of Rusty Rivets. Um, Rusty's a little different because the character itself is older, and when he started recording, they pitched him down. Yeah, that's so okay. that I as his voice dropped, they could just pitch him back up that to normal. Where with PJ, because the character was the youngest out of the three, was so young, they didn't do that. And when it's harder to pitch a, 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 a voice to yeah. down as it is to just adjust it up. Yeah. So we're, yeah. he's still waiting to find out what's going on with PJ. The funniest thing though is every time I go in the booth for Rusty or PJ, they always play a reference and they always take clips from the first season. And I'm standing there and I'm like, oh my god, my voice changed so long. Yeah, you can see here from the title to the title now. And later, as yeah. you hear the, the, yeah. the opening title scene, when they're like, you're singing the opening song. Yeah. And then you hear the voice later, it's, it's like so. Yeah. Same tone. Hey, baby, come over here. Come here. Wait for the camera. This is my. This is my. So, as a mother, what made you decide to get, a, get your son into this whole industry? Like, well, you know, I was once bitten, twice shy. I had done one of those, you know, conventions, come to the Holiday Inn, bring your cute kids, spend money, we'll represent them, one of those. So we did that, nothing came of it with my two younger daughters. So I kind of just left it, thought, well, in whole industries is a scam. That was, you know, how I looked at it. And then, um, might as well tell the story. We were camping, the Jonas Brothers were shooting Camp Rock 2, and an agent came over and saw him and gave me a card and said, this little boy is so unique, he's so interesting, you know, he needs to have an agent. And I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I held on to the card, and then I kept thinking about it afterwards because he then said he wanted to do that. And I'm like, you want to do what? Be a singer? Because they were singing. No, I want to be an actor. So, but a month went by, I picked up the card and I gave him a call. They wanted to come and see him. So, because I had the bad experience previous to that, I went in with the attitude like, you're not getting any money out of me, I'm not paying for anything, and they were like, we'll pay for your headshots, we'll pay your admin fee, um, we'll take the admin free fee, which is $200, out of his first check. If he doesn't book anything, you don't, you don't owe us anything. You're, like, you're out nothing. 
That's and how it's supposed to be. And I went, okay, I can do that. And then, like, you know, McDonald's commercials, all these commercials started popping up, and I'm like, oh. And then he booked one for Canon. And I thought, okay, these guys aren't bad. Then on my own, I had put them in for all the short films and stuff, and then by the time we got to the web series, it's like, I seem to be the one doing all the work here to get them you know, on camera. Let's try a different agent. And that's when I just sent all the things straight to the top, top three, and picked one from there. But because he was so young and because he was so unique, there was none of them had anyone like him on their roster, so it was kind of an easy pick for them. <laughs> So yeah, and yep. went right from that to uh, you know feature films, television. So do you pick the projects, or obviously Kyle's gonna have a say in it as well? Well, it depends. He does now. It depends. Yeah. Um, as a, I'm not gonna say as a kid because I technically still am, but as a small child, I didn't have as much say. Um, but now you know auditions come through, I read them, and if I if I'm really like not okay with, because I mean, as I'm growing up, I know I didn't even just finish any sentence I started, but uh, <laughs> as as I'm as I'm growing up, the roles become more mature, which I mean, more uh, inappropriate content comes through, more language and whatnot. And if I'm, if I'm really not okay with something, I will say I'm not okay with doing this, and then I don't necessarily have to do the audition depending on what it is. Um, but I mean, usually, uh, I'm, it's, it's good. Uh, I haven't had to say no to a lot of stuff. There have been a couple though that I wasn't comfortable with uh, some of the content in the audition. But um, for the most part, it's been good. Uh, I definitely, when I book something, uh, I get excited, but there have been times where I'm like a little bit worried about something. Because you know, based off of the audition, there was a there was a slight chance of something going through that I wouldn't be comfortable with. But usually, I just go through with it. I haven't said no to anything I've booked. I don't think. No, and then a lot of the times too, you know, if they really like them and there's a word or a line or something, they'll change, change it. it. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, you as a mother, like the last thing you want is you, your kids say profanity like throughout the whole movie. Right? Yeah. yeah. We've, uh, you know, a couple of his friends just took on a project. It was a big one, and he said no, and I said no, and they kept begging, and casting kept asking, and I said, it just, you know what, maybe in a year or two this will be right up his alley, but for now, he just turned 13. Once you cross that bridge, you can't go back. Yes, yeah, that's Right? Very true. So we just want to keep him nice and young, keep him in the roles that he's having fun. I mean, uh, his next series, V Wars. There's all kinds of swearing and death and gore and all kinds of stuff in that. Not for me, not for me. But it's, it's from <laughs> characters just, just around him. Yeah. But he's at a point where he was ready for that. Yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, I, I don't know, I probably would have felt uncomfortable in that situation. But I, now at that point, because I mean, not to throw anyone under the bus, but I mean, at school, people are kind of like that a little bit for language-wise and whatnot. So I'm comfortable with it, kind of. But I mean, especially if it's coming from adults, I'm like, okay, whatever, I mean, they're adults, they can do what they want. Um, so it doesn't really bother me that much. Are you, do you, do you find yourself uh, wanting to do more the comedy aspect or more drama? Are you, which, which kind of camp are you leaning towards? Both. Uh, I was worried that was gonna be your answer. <laughs> drama. <laughs> drama. Well, I mean, um, <laughs> It really depends on the, the type of drama or comedy. Yeah. Um, sometimes, I mean, I do a little bit of both. I mean, V Wars is definitely not a comedy, but there have been moments where I've thrown a, a like, I've kind of popped my sense of humor in there a little bit. I've taken the lines that originally weren't actually supposed to be funny, and just the way that I did them, they were funny, and the directors were like, okay, that's actually really awesome, we're just going to leave that the way it is, so, uh... A little bit of comic yeah. relief in amongst the yeah. blood and gore. I don't know if, I like, making comedy dramatic would be very easy. No. Um, but, uh, you know. I always thought comedy, 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 and then he just kept booking drama after drama after drama, well, and I was going, huh. It's, it, and that's, that's his personality, he's got funny. So, like, leaning towards the comedy makes sense, but then usually what you find with the, with the comedic guys is they like the dramatic roles. Yeah, I think it's just because it's different from themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. 
Yes. Want to ask Echo anything? Oh, come on. Ask him, man. Want to ask him to say anything? He doesn't mind. Do you want to ask his favorite like villain is or anything? No? Are you being shy? You can't be shy. Who is your favorite villain? Oh, uh, definitely Night Ninja. That's the funniest one. Oh, I love the little Ninjalinos. Yes, yes. Just their little, their little like gurgling and stuff that they do. So like whoever does the voice for that. <laughs> have you met them too? I have, I have. And I just I How old are they? Angelina. Def they're, they're, they're adults. Brothers. Adults. Oh. Yeah. They just they use Well like Because they're, they're arena. professionals. That's that's what they do is they, they they create stuff. Uh non uh human voices is basically what they do for, for TV and sh for yes. shows and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's their job. Night Ninja is yeah, 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 yeah. Night Ninja's kid, but all the guys in the background, they're all. Well, in the Vampirina, there's the gargoyle, and she's Wanda. What's her actress? This older lady. Wanda is the gargoyle who plays this. Yeah. They do use grown ups, too. Yeah. Cool. That was the Wonder Woman doesn't have any questions. She probably does. She's just no being shy. For, for they're kidding? all shy here. She's not shy, but she doesn't know how to ask. <laughs> it took, it took a while to process that Gecko wasn't uh, an actual being. Yeah. Yeah, kids. Um, well, Kyle was talking to one kid who's uh, found out that he, he was Gecko, and he started to cry because he thought Gecko was an actual thing and, and not played by a person. So that kid was shattered. Um, and then another kid who was, they were, we were at a park and these kids were, these kids were playing, you know, uh, PJ Masks. And I said to the mom, I said, oh, that's cute that they're playing because he's the voice of Gecko. And the kid uh, calls the kid over and goes, oh, this is Gecko from the TV show. He goes, really? Remember all that time when you climbed that tree? Remember how you stick to the buildings? And I'm like, yeah, he, I just he didn't get it either. <laughs> yeah, he, didn't, he didn't quite understand how it worked either. I remember voicing the grunts. It's <laughs> often <laughs> oh, they just said the end of the night to save the day. Every episode. That's not true. Did they stop? Okay, so here's how it works now. It used to be every time. If it's been changed or altered to, to a specific episode, they'll have me say it again. But if it's no different than how we normally say it, they'll just grab it from another episode and put it in. Uh, they do that a lot with taglines and stuff. Like the theme song, we don't record that every time. They just use the same clip over and over again. Um, but I mean, really it just depends on whether it's being altered or not. Hmm. Not, she doesn't have any dad's name when it comes to being The third actor. one is really... Yeah, this one's going to be the actor for you. <laughs> No shame, no shame, no shame. Can I stand up? Yeah? She's the bravest. <laughs> Are you the bravest? Yeah? I look like all of them all after Wonder Woman. Yeah, I'm brave. <laughs> <laughs> Just a mascara on her face. You put it here and on her, on her lips, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know why mascara goes on the lips. Oh, man. So you watch some of the old projects sometimes? If you watch mine's eye, just how corny it is was. It, is it somewhere right now? Can you watch it? We, uh, oh, we, yeah. we we have it. We have it. We have multiple copies, actually. Oh, you do. Okay, yeah. I, I don't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, sometimes I do go back and watch some older stuff that I, that I was in when I was really little, and I just I look at myself and I'm like, is that even the same person? Because it's just it's so different from me now that I'm like that does not even look like me. Holy cow! Well, well, your hair was so like weird. Oh yeah. Yeah, you had that. You had the poof going on. Yes, I did. You had settled it, down like, a little bit now. Afro. Yeah, and then I have it super long, and now it's cut, and it's good. Are there any, are there any uh, ever mom? Uh, I can't talk today. Are there, uh, is there any, okay, well, why am I not able to speak? Is there ever a time in which you're watching something that you did, like, when you were really little, and you think to yourself, like, oh, what, what, what's going on here? What was, like, yeah. and you're, you're trying to, like, think of what you were thinking at that time? A lot, actually, yeah, a lot, a, a lot. Because, I, I mean, sometimes I just, I go back and I, I can usually remember scripts for things that I've done in the past 
and I'll know, I'll go, that was improvised, that was not in the script. What was my brain even thinking at the time for me to throw that in there? But uh, that, it happens a lot, actually. Parental guidance was really good for just letting them improv. Like, there yeah. was a whole bunch of I mean, dialogue that wasn't in the script. Even recently, and went on some of the stuff I've been in, there's been quite a bit of improv. You don't, you don't actually realize until you, you are become a, Eye yeah, I know. But you don't actually <laughs> you don't <laughs> actually realize how much of the uh, the movie is improvised until you become a part of the movie because usually people go, Okay, that was all scripted, but actually on in a lot of cases a lot of it is improvised. Like oh, at least like twenty five percent of the movie most all sometimes the can goes be out the window the moment yeah. you say action. Yeah, <laughs> un un unless it has something to actually do with the storyline, it has probably been altered by the actor. Yeah, because that's true. Because the director may think, okay, hey, this is a good take. We'll keep, we'll, we'll roll with it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So. And quite yeah. often they'll make them do multiple versions of multiple takes in different ways. Yeah, and sometimes when people mess up too, they they leave it because they think it's funny. Like oh, the bloopers are hilarious. In the first uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movie, when uh, Chris Pratt's character Star Lord goes to hand the orb over to the Collector guy and he drops it, that actually wasn't supposed to happen. He actually dropped it and picked it back up and kept going with the scene, and they just kind of left it in the movie. That's the best. The best ones are like that. Yeah. Who is like who in Hollywood do you kind of look up to now? Um. Well, besides Dwayne and, and yeah. Hitler. Um. Honestly, I think Chris Pratt is actually a pretty good example because I mean, up until the Lego Movie, nobody really knew who he was unless you've watched Parks and Recreation. But uh, before that, nobody really knew who he was, and he kind of just exploded. And I really admire that, though, the fact that he just kind of went from zero to a hundred. Um, Ian Somerhalder, definitely. I just worked with him on a project, and uh, I really admire him because he's just a, such a nice guy, and he, he cares so much for the projects he's working on and the environment and other people, and he's just an amazing person. Um, How was he on set? Uh, well, he directed a yes, couple episodes? Yes, he directed a couple episodes and he acted. On set, though, he it depends on what kind of scene, really. I mean, if it's a super serious scene, then of course he's super serious and he's always in the moment. But he does have times where he'll throw in something that's really funny and because it's a serious scene, no one expects it. Um, and then there will be, you know, funny scenes and whatnot and he'll just... I mean, off camera, he's he's hilarious on the, in those moments. But uh, he wants to get things done the right way. So if it's supposed to be a very serious scene, he stays serious so that he isn't out of the moment. Which is I, I really admire that honestly because I mean some people aren't able to do that. Some people they just their characters that they they're always like they're not always on task. Yeah, the character and the persona that they have. Yeah. It also keeps the feel of the room. Yeah. 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 So I'm never in that works. Yeah, I'm the I'm the goof that's making a face when the slate's getting knocked and then And I'm the one licking the camera. Cry scene all of a sudden. Is that it? <laughs> I'm the one who licks the camera. You lick the camera? There yeah. we go. That was on you. On, on yeah. Your that's why you did. You yeah, I did. Camera. I licked the camera. You I remember licked that. The I thought that was in the warehouse. I wonder yeah. what was even going through my I mind. I know exactly what was happening. Okay, so the lens is this big. He's four years old, and he's seen his face in it. So his face just started getting bigger, and he's like, uh, you lick, yeah, oops. That's right, you're in the, the loop reel. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Wow. I haven't done that since, though. <laughs> that's good, I'm glad I got the unique experiences. <laughs> yeah. That was so funny, though. Wow, I totally forgot about that. I don't remember that. <laughs> so how did, the, how, how did the audition process go for parental guidance? Because you went from commercials at four to said it before, Billy Crystal movie at, at six. Yeah. That seems like a quick escalation. Actually, I remember exactly how that went. I was actually, I did it at a coaching uh, studio so that I could get, so that we could get it done like really well. Um, and I don't even think there was a callback. I think I just auditioned and I got it. There no. Was, was we, there a callback? There wasn't a callback for that per se. Oh, right, but then we had the screen test in LA. Yeah, so they had gone through 2,000 tapes. Uh, trying to find this role of Barker. They had looked at every kid in America. They had looked 
everywhere. So then they decided to go wide and just take a peek in Canada. Let's let's see what we get. And then this spunky little redhead showed up across their desk, and Billy That's was me. like, yeah. "Him, <laughs> right?" So they one. brought they brought <laughs> Kyle and one other boy, who they're now friends, in to test for the role. Yeah. And we waited a week, and then we heard that Kyle booked it, but he still needed his visa. Oh, and that I was a big delay on the visa. The visa production company calls us on a Thursday night and said, I'm sorry, tomorrow's Friday. The visa's not in by noon. I'm, We're recasting. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I... 11 a.m., the visa came through. So <laughs> that's how that went through. What are you cold? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> not the warmest room in, on, on the planet. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Well, we just right. went from like what minus twenty to plus twelve to back to minus ten again. Yeah, you don't know what to wear. We're we're we go up and down. Mother Nature's out of whack lately. It's like she keeps blasting winter and then walking out and going, "Hey, wait, I'll come back." I oh, know we blame Elsa for that. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants your snowman, Elsa. <laughs> Do you no, want to go to the snowman? No, I want to go to the beach. Leave yeah, me alone. Want to build an ice man? <laughs> it's like ice storm. Uh, we had a mini weekend this week, actually. Two days off Wednesday school. and Thursday, uh, we had no school because yeah. we were so busy. Where's the favorite? What's the most favorite place you've been to so far, like uh, on shooting locations? Argentina, for sure. That was the craziest experience. That that like oh, yeah. that was just nuts. How long were you there for? Uh, two months, something yeah. like that. Yeah. It was it was nuts. It was, eye opening. It was so cool though. Culturally different. It was. It was. The crew were all amazing. Something that you don't see uh, that they have there though is they have full on markets every day. Just like a full like you go and they've got booths set up and whatnot. And you don't get that here really. There's not uh, those going on all the time. And it was just so interesting because the stuff that they were making was almost like made for Argentina. So it was just, it was so, not like tropical, but it was just the whole theme of everything was more exotic. Cultural. Yes, cultural. That was a good time. It was fun. Yeah, we have farmer's markets here, but just like on Saturdays in St. Jacob's, yeah, like the more bigger areas. Every day in the tourist yeah. areas. Wow. Yeah, Buenos Aires market was huge. Uh, that was that was awesome. I spent probably f at least four hundred bucks Canadian there, <laughs> which is like eight billion dollars in their money. <laughs> so what is it like with the family? Because I mean, you've got a fairly large family with diverse uh, uh, hobbies. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got to go for two months, does the whole gang go, or do you just no. do you just go? We took uh, the youngest when Kaylin lucked out. She got to go to Vancouver. She got to go to L.A., she got to go to Argentina, because I was homeschooling them at the time, so she got to come along too. But now that they're older, they can kind of stay home. You know, the youngest is 11, so, you know, and then I got a 20-year-old and 18-year-old as well at home, so. And, and decided not to get, take a back thing after uh, well, her, she, last, her last she, role? She did one role, right? She loved it. She thought she was going to be, you know, the next Marilyn Monroe. And then this, and there's she, this and there was, guy. There was this horrible showrunner who fired her and uh, <laughs> brought her back as a guest, though, and let her redeem herself. We're looking at you. I wasn't the showrunner. Oh, okay. She was devastated. No, she no, totally was she, fine with it. She, yeah. She I redeemed myself. I got something in the hotel room to give those Harry Potter bobbleheads. Yeah. I got from San Diego. She'll definitely forgive yeah. you for that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's all, room. I'll get after it's all love. And I even said, like, what about uh, going and working in his spirit bar? But it's just too far away. Yeah, it's far away. Yeah, you guys are, yeah, it's funny. So they live in a faraway city that sounds like it's from another country. And so when I heard you were coming from where you live, I was like, you're going to fly all the way here from there? <laughs> I thought you guys were living in Scotland. <laughs> Yeah, we crazy. get that a lot. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, especially at the dentist. Yeah. They're like, you came Wait, all you the way to Scotland? <laughs> no, it's Scotland, Ontario. Where else, where else would you go? Like, if, you know, if I gave you, you know, $10,000, where would you fly to? Or where, what, or what country would you want to go visit right now if you could? Um, 
Uh, either I would start in Scotland, in Europe, and then travel all of Europe, like Germany, Greece, uh, England, Rome, France, that kind of thing. Uh, Estonia. All of yeah. <laughs> uh, Poland. Yeah, but Finland. All those places. We're next to Finland. I thought it was a fake country. No, it's not fake. Yeah, no, Encino Man made it, made it popular. I thought it was a movie Encino Man. Princess Bride had their fake place. Everybody yeah, thought it was right. fake, but never like coming out around. Yeah, and I'm like, Rain is from there too? What, I know people from this? It's an actual <laughs> place. Either, either there or I would go on a tropical vacation in Hawaii. <laughs> but probably the Europe thing. Mainly because there's just so much cool Europe stuff there. Europe is great. The actress, yeah. Mena Suwari, she's half Estonian. She played in American. American Pie. American Pie? No. You know, Savari, yeah, she was an American Pie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, there you go. I'm good if you're, I, if you guys have any other questions at all, I, I, I think we're good. Yeah, Anything. Any other interesting stories you want to share with the room? You want to oh, I've got loads of stories. We could sit here for days and I Let's do it then. Stories. Ian, can you lock the doors back in? <laughs> yeah. You just got a pickle Just buckle down. We got water. We'll be fine. Um, yeah, can you live off of water? <laughs> you, you could. What's your favorite food? Uh, Everything. Come on, you have to ask me the hardest question yes, ever. Yes, I did. Uh, hey, the food edible food. kind. Yeah, edible kind. Uh, yup. Yep. wouldn't say that in this oh. picture right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Is that what I meant? I didn't get it. So. I can't. I can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, all the parents that were like, all the adults like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She's just like, what's I that? understood that. Oh, uh, that's not good. <laughs> hey, I'm 13. No. I know oh. what's going on. <laughs> it's 13. It's twice your age. What's your favorite dessert? Okay. <laughs> that's a mom. Dessert. That's a mom question. Yeah. More. Cake or Danish? <laughs> oh. Cake or pie? Cake or pie? Cake, cake, cake. I like pie. Or pumpkin pie. Depends on the pie. Yeah, pumpkin she's, pie she's is really pie. good. She doesn't like cake. Mm. Pie, so pastry. Pizza or mac and cheese? <laughs> mac and cheese? No, no danishes. danishes. No danishes? Ever. I know, danishes aren't dessert. It's just breakfast. But that's, that's true, that's true. See, you can have danish every day if you want to. <laughs> Cereal in the morning? Or in like theory. Yeah, that's the <laughs> For him, I could I could chips. gather every Danish a recipe so on bad. the planet and set it on fire. To <laughs> more specific. Now. How long ago did you film the Danish scene? That was uh, like three months ago. And you're, you're yeah, that was that was viewers. That was like in November. Wait, yeah, wait a few years and then you'll have, you'll do the Danish scene and then like a week later you'll be like I could go for one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I could. I mean, no, because I'll never do another Danish scene again. Um, <laughs> being on set and kind of being having having the behind the camera or, or in front of the camera, I should say, experience. Does that change the way you watch other projects or watch other kids act? Where you go, definitely. Is that, I, I wouldn't have done that with that role. Definitely, it definitely does change things. It's. It's like, you know, a musician hears music differently than other people. Same yeah. thing with an actor, they, they see movies differently and they they go, oh, that's interesting. They notice things that other yeah. people wouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it, and they'll know what's going on, right? They'll know why something was placed here, which it just, it's almost like when I go to the movies and see a movie, I almost overthink the movie. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, I notice all the little details and whatnot. Catch the flaws. Sometimes it can be really annoying because I'm like, I just want to watch this movie. And then I'm the worst because I'll stop a movie to show everybody that there's a continuity issue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I can't, I can't watch a movie anymore in the theater. I have to yeah. stop my brain off. You know that, you know that person Staying that talks there. through the whole movie and whispers in your ear? Maybe. The, 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 the scenes that bother me, and the, like television is one thing that drives me crazy, because continuity is a nightmare. Sometimes. Especially with the eating scenes, where they'll have like a loaf of bread they're eating, and the loaf of bread will be like three chunks out of it, and then back one piece, and then a chunk yeah. out of the other side. Yeah. Like they, they just, yeah. I love that loaf of bread that can just go back one piece, right? <laughs> like, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> What's what's the typical filming day like when you're on set and you're and you're filming? What's the typical 
Oh. Like, guys are you there for like 13, 14 hours on set or? Depends on how much my character's in the, in the show or a movie. Well, um, the union also steps in because it's true. child actors it's are only true. allowed to work a certain number of hours. Yeah. And they're only allowed a certain number well, of like hours break, under lights and whatnot light. where they have to get breaks. A lot. Um, <laughs> once they turn 12, that increases and they can work overtime. So I think he could do a maximum of 12. I'm, I'm more used to the U.S. rules than the Canadian rules, so I'm just trying to think of what it is for here. Um, the money's different, not the time. <laughs> that's true. It's it's, it, for, for adults, I know it's 12. 12, but 12, kids over... Eight. That's over 18, right? Under 18, I think. Okay. So, so, so there is an in-between, because he, he can do 12 hours, but an hour of it has to include his lunch. And, yeah. And, whatever. and then because tutoring has to fit into those hours as yeah. well, right? So, so, some, so sometimes, yeah. like, uh, like during the summer, a kid who's a couple years younger than me could actually work longer than I could if I had school to do, because I have to have a maximum of like two hours of school per day. So that takes two hours off plus the two hours of lunch, but then, you know, the, the extra two hours I have are then gone, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference depending on the time of year. But on a non-union job, they can go work on as long as they want, so you have to make sure you're not working on non-union projects yep. that are of any length. Yeah, because then you as a mom, could, like, could you step in and just say, look, like, we're yeah. done for the day? Yes. Yeah, and I have. Yeah. yeah. You, you have to. I mean, no one else is going to protect your kids. Super mom you. over here. Like, it has to be you. And if I see something, even though a stunt coordinator's looked at it, and I think it may be dangerous, I'm like, can you explain it to me again? Can you go over this again? I'm, I do that, too, because a lot. Like, if I feel like I'm not safe. And they know that I'm approachable, and, and you know, that, that easy to talk to, and uh, yeah. you just got to keep those communications open. Stunt coordinators are usually really good about it, though. The most important thing is, at the end of the day, is that, you know, your son's happy and safe. The rest of it doesn't matter. Anybody who's in it for the money... <laughs> safe doesn't really matter. I'm dangling precariously over a long time. busy Well, yeah, because you're, you're protecting your child, right? So you don't want, obviously, anything to happen. And you're relying 99% of the time on your motherly instincts anyways. That's right. And any decent director will appreciate that. They really will. Cool. Okay, so what your own... You said you did your own stunts. Yes, I did. Once. Um, it was a skateboard scene that Tony Hawk was involved in. I was stand. It was parental guidance. I was standing at the top of the skateboard ramp. So let me just, the just reset the scene. Six years old. Six years old. A yes. Skateboard stunt that Tony Hawk's involved in. Yes. A huge ramp. I'm standing at the top. I have a tube being fed through my through through my pants so to make me look like I'm peeing. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Tony Hawk slips in my fake pee. And the skateboard comes right here, almost hitting me in the face. And I did it myself. I almost got a skateboard in the face. The one take, it actually came like right here. Billy grabbed him and I was so him. freaked out. But uh, after that, yeah. He... After that, after that, Tony Hawk actually felt bad and he mailed me a couple of skateboard gear. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he mailed me some stuff because he felt bad for us. Killing me with his board. Well, he scared him more than anything, too. Just the sound if you've never been on a half bite. Yeah, it's bad. And then loud. there was more prop to be on set when he scares you? Yeah. Or no? Yeah. <laughs> there was more skaters on there, so just the volume on yeah, the half they had to pack his ears because he was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, it was so loud, though. But I mean, afterwards, now that I look back at it, I'm like, I almost got killed by Tony Hawk's skateboard. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that was the other thing I was going to ask is, is being on that set at six years old. Did you realize at the time who was on set, or was it just that's Billy? I knew who Tony Hawk was at the time on that yeah. on that that thing. I mean, Tony Hawk, who doesn't know who Tony Hawk is, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, Billy, I didn't really know until I got to know him, and uh, I was introduced to some of the stuff that he was in. I watched. Uh, I mean, honestly, I probably shouldn't have. But City Slickers. City yeah. Slickers. I watched that at age six. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was a good movie, though. Janice, how you could be in all? We'll grab those Harry Potter. Those were yeah. funny. Bette Midler, we, Bette Midler I was. didn't know who she was at all. Or Marissa. Um, no. Man, uh, no, Marissa was Bette Midler? Yeah. If there's the yes. through line. Yes. And she's like, Marissa, owe me a favor. Mm -hmm. Bring me in as a young Spider-Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. He actually could. He actually could put off pull off a very young Tom Holland, like easy. Oh no no! Just another Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Just do, do the Spider Man <laughs> thing. Just another Spider Man. Just be another Spider Man. The scariest thing about the about Tom Holland as Spider Man is he actually looks like young Stan Lee, and it's terrifying. If you look it up and you do a comparison of young Stan Lee and Tom Holland, they look like the same person. We'll do that as soon as it's announced. Yes, you should. You should. It's actually scary. They look so much alike. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for making the trip. Yep. I, was, I really enjoyed this, man. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you also for letting us hang out with you for the weekend.